Well, you've probably heard the news already that Anthropic have actually now launched Claude 3 Haiku, their small and super fast model. And as we knew it would be, it's available on Amazon Bedrock. So let's jump into this and actually make it work. I have an account here and I haven't enabled the model in this account yet. So let's go through it, let's have a go, and then let's actually write some code. And Francois, if you're watching, this video is for you. I'm not going to write Python. For the first time ever, I'm going to use JavaScript. This will be a journey. I promised I would do this. Let's go. So Amazon Bedrock, if you've not seen it before, it's the generative AI service inside of AWS. It gives you a choice of models from different leading providers, and you can enable them inside of your account. Let's go in and enable access for Haiku. So I'm going to go to the menu. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and I'm going to click on Model Access. Now, I'm really zoomed in on this display so that I can fit it squeezy onto the LinkedIn page. If we have a look at here with the base models that we've got available, if I scroll scroll down, I notice that in this Anthropic section, I have Haiku there. And if I just scroll it across slightly, it's available, um, but it's not currently enabled. So if I scroll right across here, I've got access to the end user license agreement. Um, if I want to enable access, this is what I do. I'm going to scroll to the top. I'm going to click on Manage Model Access. I'm going to scroll back down again and click on that model, which is Claude 3 Haiku. Once I've got that clicked, then I scroll to the bottom and I click Save Changes. Now I've got a green tick next to Claude 3 Haiku. Okay, so the first thing that I can do here to actually have a play around with this for the very, very first time um, is go to the um, menu on the side here, and I've got a couple of different options. So I've got the text playground, and I've got the chat playground. Now, Haiku is one of the new Claude 3 models, which is multimodal on the input. So you can input images, you can also input text. That is supported inside of the chat playground, which looks very squishy here. So let me just zoom out, select some options, and then zoom back in again for you to be able to see. So in the chat playground, I can go to select models, I can go to Anthropic, of course, and I've got Claude 3 Sonnet, and then Claude 3 Haiku, which is available here. So I'll select that, I'll scroll across, and I'll scroll down, let's get rid of me, and click Apply. So over here in the bottom, I can type in a prompt. So I can say, what is the capital city of Australia? Click Enter on that, and I enter into a chat session with the model. And look how fast that generation was. That really was really impressive. But what we can also do is here is we can upload an image into this and start asking questions about the image. And maybe I can go back to the original paper, original website here. Um, let's just take a snapshot of that. Then I've inserted that screenshot. And then let's say, what is this image showing? And press Enter on that. So not very imaginative in terms of what I'm asking for. I get that. Um, but it comes back and says, this image is showing an announcement from the AI company Claude announcing the release of the new model called Claude 3 Haiku. So that's absolutely what it is. You can do so much more with this. You can throw graphs in there and ask it to analyze the graphs. Um, you can throw photographs in there and ask it to analyze photographs. So the model is enabled in my account, and I can use it inside of the playground. That's great. And that's a really useful thing to do if you're experimenting around with prompts. But what about if we actually want to write some code? Here we go, Francois, again, this is for you. I'm going to write some JavaScript. Um, so I literally have nothing in here at all at the moment. And I am kind of new to this, so let's see how we go. I think the first thing that I need to do is I need to make sure I've got Node installed. That is installed. Um, there's going to be a couple of other things as well. Let's bring up a terminal so I've got that ready. And I'll probably just get rid of me for the moment. The first thing that I need, I think, is a, a package.json file. And so this is in no way a tutorial on how to write JavaScript. I am not the person you need for that. I just want to show you, you can use Amazon Bedrock with other things other than Python. OK, let's get back into this. So I need to flesh out um, this file. And let's make that much bigger so that you can see it a little bit clearer. So as I understand it, that's the basis of what I need to have in here. I think I do also need to include 
um, a dependencies thing. And you notice that as I'm uh, writing here, obviously code completion is helping me out to some extent, but I also have code whisperer as well in here, which is helping me out a great deal as well. So this, we're using the bedrock runtime um, SDK. What have we got there? A version which has come in, which I think that's all good. Okay, all right, so we've got this now. We've got the setup of our package.json. Let's save that. And now let's go and actually write app.js, app.js. Okay, so I need, I need a helping hand. I need to start with this. Um, so we actually have some code samples. There are many, many, many code samples for using Amazon Bedrock in general. Um, there won't be many right now, as in right now this second, because Haiku literally has launched. Um, so let's go and see what we can find. Over here inside of the code library, so this is actions for Amazon Bedrock runtime using AWS SDKs. Um, some colleagues of mine have worked really hard to um, update this and get loads of really quality examples in here. And so we've got several for Anthropic. So there are some, there is one for Claude at the moment. Um, that's currently in Python. Um, so that's okay. More of these samples will be coming. Um, if I go to Claude 2, um, and then, yeah, there's a JavaScript version. So there is an example of some code here which uses JavaScript. Now, there are some differences with the way that Claude 3 works versus Claude 2. So I'll have to make some adjustments to this. But um, for me, this is going to be a huge help and step in the right direction. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that into, into here. OK, let, let's have a look at see what we need to change around in here to make it work with 3. Um, first of all, I could change that to 3. That's not going to make a huge amount of difference, but it makes me feel good. So scrolling down here, I guess the first thing I've got here is model ID. This is currently pointing to the old version, uh, or Claude 2. Claude version 2, still very capable, but the older version. So I need to get a new model ID here. So let's go to the AWS console and find that. So if I go back out uh, in the Amazon Bedrock console page, and I go to uh, Providers, um, and then I go to Anthropic at the top here, then I've got these tabs here where I can cycle through the different models that are available. And if I then scroll down, it gives me an API request sample. And one of the things that's in here which I want to use is this here, which is the model ID. There's probably There, there are multiple places to get this ID from, but this works for me. So I can go ahead and paste that into there. So that's cool. Um, then, um, OK, so now we've got this prompt here. So what it, this is actually doing is it's uh, formatting the prompt in the human assistant format, which is required for a Claude 2. Claude 3 uses something different. So I don't want this. Um, so let's. Let's get rid of that. And if I come down here, I see payload. And so this payload is going to be what's sent into the model. And I'm, I'm quite familiar with how to do this with Python. Um, and so it looks fairly similar and familiar to me. Um, so let's work with this. I'm going to take stop sequences out because, again, Claude 3 doesn't work quite in the same way. Um, so OK. Um, we've got some other syntax things here which need to be looked at. So if I come back in here, you actually see the structure of what needs to be sent in. So we have this messages structure. Um, we've got a role that we have to send in. Um, and then inside of that, in the content, we have a list of things which are sent in. And that can either be the image or the text. So let's just work with text just for the moment. I'm also seeing some other changes here. So max tokens is the thing we want, not max tokens to sample. So let's copy that over. And then let's write the rest of the prompt up. So I want max tokens in there. And then this prompt is not what I want. So instead of that, I want to have messages. And this messages itself is going to be a list. And the list is going to contain that data structure that we looked at. So we have um, role. Um, and there, like it's actually Code Whisperer is doing a lot to help me out here. So we've got uh, role, uh, user, and then content. And it's got this metadata. I don't need that. Um, but I do want content. And then inside of content, this is actually a list itself. And that's a list of things. And we're going to have, I think, is it type? Is text. And then the next thing that I want is to have the actual text itself. And I'm just going to make that equal to prompt. Uh, because in this code, we have the prompt being sent in here. 
So that's the text which is being sent in. So the question we've got, for example, um, now this is going to put it into this payload structure here. Um, and I've got role user, the content, the type, the text, the text, and the prompt is all in there. I think I'm also going to need a, an API version. Yeah, so back over here, I've got this Anthropic version. The Anthropic version is this Bedrock version here. So let me copy that and we'll bring that over here. And we'll just fix up the formatting of that a little bit because of the code we're putting it into. Um, OK, so we've got, I think, now a full payload that we need to send to the service. Um, so then we have an invoke model command here. So this is the single API endpoint command structure that we use for Amazon Bedrock. So it's going to send in this payload. Right, and then we've got some JavaScripty type stuff. Clearly, this is not my area of expertise. We have some JavaScript stuff here, which is um, working on that. It's going to send that command through that client. We're going to await for the answer. We're going to get a response back. Excellent. Um, and then what's it going to do? We're going to get um, the decoded response back. So we have a streaming body response. Uh, it's not a streaming text response, but it's a streaming body response. We need to get that back. And that's going to live in this thing, I guess, called decoded response body. So that's cool. Um, and then we've got, right, so we're decoding the Jarvis, the JSON output there. So then we have response body and we're sending back completion from response body. OK, so that was, again, how Claude 2 worked. So we need to send back the completion as it pertains to the output from Claude 3. So this is a slightly different structure. So for this, we've got um, content is what actually comes back and it's a list. So I'm, gonna I'm just going to take the first thing that comes out of the content um, because I'm not handling many different types of scenarios here. And it's the text that I want to come back from that. That is what I want to return. So then what well, we've got some error handling stuff, which is great. And then we come down to where it actually invokes. So we have the prompt going in, uh, complete the following once upon a time, dot, dot, dot. Nice, we're going to make a story. So that's great. Um, the console log then said, oh, well, need to change that three. Um, so we're going to send a prompt out and we're going to get a completion back. It's going to print the completion there. I don't know. Hopefully that's everything that we need. So let's give it a run. So I've logged into my AWS environment. Um, let's type in node forward slash app.js and see if that works. No, it doesn't. Oh, let's press, let's save this and try again, shall we? Okay, far not found. How do we get rid of this? There we go. OK, what didn't it find? Oh, I think I haven't installed the AWS SDK for uh, for JavaScript. So I need to do, uh, is it npm install? OK, and now let's try running that again. OK, it's trying it once upon a time. Well, hey, there's our story. I think that's a win. It's actually got some JavaScript working, but working specifically with the uh, Claude 3 Haiku messaging structure. So it's a slightly different way to the way that we work with other models on Amazon Bedrock. But more excitingly than that, we can send images to this, right? So let's, let's get this so that we can actually send an image to it as well. So I guess the first thing I need is an image. So if I, I've, I actually have this. I've figured out which image I wanted beforehand. So there you go. That's, uh, that's Suman and me when we were recently in London. Let's see if we can use this image. All right. So what I think we should do here um, is, let's have a look down here, where the thing is actually called. We actually send in a uh, prompt, but we can also send in um, image path, I guess. Um, which for the moment will just be image.jpg. Don't forget the semicolon, folks. Um, so we've got an image going in as well as the prompt. OK, that's cool. So what I now need is a way to load that image in as a base64 string. OK, I've found this code here. So if I paste this in, let's have a look at this. This is importing something called FS. I'm assuming this is for file system promises. Um, and then I've got this function here, which is going to load an image as base64. So it's going to load it from the file path that we're going to send it. And it's going to return for us a base64 string. So I don't know, let's go back down to the bottom here. Where do we call the invoke? Here we go. We call invoke Claude here, which is a function that we've got up above. So let's send in that and let's also send in our image path. Um, so it's got access to both. So that'll bring our image path up to, where is it? 
uh, here, invoke Claude, prompt, and so we're going to go image path. So that'll be arriving in here. So we now need to get our image available so that we can put it into this payload here. So let's give ourselves some room here. And I'm really quite impressed here with Code Whisperer. Code Whisperer has done this for me. Just it said, I know what you want to do. Um, you want to make this image base 64 string. And what's it doing? Yeah, it's done it everything exactly as I want. That's fantastic. So now I've got my base 64 encoded image. That's great. Um, how do we insert it into here? Well, let's go back and have a look at the documentation. So um, in that content list, I need to have a type of image, and then I need to have source, and then this structure here. Okay, so let's let's actually copy this out um, and sort of use this to guide us. So here's my content list here. I will do what it did and put it right uh, put it at the beginning. Um, so this obviously is not. Uh, formatted right for the JavaScript yet, but that's okay. So let's take type is going to be image, uh, source, and then we have inside of the source, we've got base64, inside of media type, what's that currently set to? JPEG. I'll leave that hard-coded to JPEG for the purposes of this quick demo um, because I'm going to. And it is actually a JPEG image that we're loading in here. And so this here needs to be replaced with um, something. So it needs to be what? The base uh, 64 string? Is that what it was? Let's have a look. Um, no, image base 64 is going to go there. Um, so hey, that's looking pretty good. I guess now the only thing to do really is give this a go. So I'm going to scroll down here rather than say complete the following. I don't want that. That's that's. I don't want to write a story this time. Um, I want to ask a question about this image. So let's go into here and say um, where is this image taken? Where where was where was this image? this image taken. Okay, a valid question. Okay, and if you remember what the image looked like, it looked like that. So see if you can figure out where this image was taken. All right, let's make sure I save that. And then uh, let's run that app again. So it can see the question, where was this image taken? And it's come back with this answer. The image appears to have been taken in front of the iconic Big Ben clock tower in London. It's absolutely got it right. That that makes me really excited. So there you go. We've enabled Claude 3 Haiku inside of the Amazon Bedrock console. We took a play around in the playground, the chat playground, where we could throw our image in. But we also got it working with code as well. And this time, I got it working with JavaScript. Let me know the kinds of things that you're going to make with Claude 3 Haiku using Amazon Bedrock in the comments below. If you do want to see more things like this, then please do connect with me on LinkedIn because I post frequently about generative AI. And I will put links below to all of the resources that I used for this particular video. And hey, I'll even paste that code in the post as well. I mean, it's not worthy of going on GitHub, but I will paste it in my post and you can copy and paste it, use it as you wish. I will also paste a link to this uh, code library list that we looked at with all of these amazing code samples. And also remember that community.aws is always available for in-depth articles, for project ideas, for you to be able to write your own articles as well as to be able to read articles from other people in the community. So go to community.aws forward slash generative AI if you want to see all the things about generative AI. I am uh, super excited about this piece of code. So I might go and play around with this a little bit more. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next time, I'll see you then.